Hi, um, welcome, welcome to our second live YouTube live chat. Um, at the end of our last one, our last uh, chat, I left you with this and asked if you knew what it was. Well, it's a thermostat. Um, this is the most common type of thermostat you get in most showers. Um, we sometimes call it a wax capsule and that's because inside here is filled with wax. And what happens is the uh, is when the hot water, when warm water moves over this or cold, the piston at the end here moves out and in. I don't know if you can see that, it moves out and in, like that. Um, and it's that that controls the, te the temperature of the water. There, there are one or two different shapes, they're, but they're more, sorry, there are one or two different sizes, but they're more or less all the same shape as this. Um, and the, uh, the movement in the pin here, um, in some cases, is probably as little as maybe two mil from if it was fully hot to fully cold. And in general, maybe not more than, um, not more than four mil. We do have a, a little video that shows you how to test that by marking the pin and dropping it into a cup of hot water and cold water. Um, and I'm sure that there'll be something on the screen that will guide you to that particular page. Um, the one thing about this you shouldn't do is that never pull the pin out to see if you can see what the problem is. If you do, all, of it, all that happens is you let air in between the wax and the pin and it basically doesn't work, like, work properly because you compress the air. And to be into a little bit more detail, what happens is this pin usually fits, not in every shower, but most shower fits into something like this, the shuttle. Um, and what happens is it's called the shuttle because it shuttles back and forward between the hot and cold ports inside the shower. So as this, as this expands and contracts, the wax expands and contracts, this moves back and forward. Um, I've got the inside of a shower here. This is a... Uh, this is a fairly standard brass valve. This is the outlet, this and this end are the outlet, and these are the inlets. And what happens is the water comes in here and runs to the back of the valve, and it comes in this side and runs to the front of the valve. And between the back and front ports, this the shuttle moves back and forward. And so as, as the thermostat senses the temperature, it moves the shuttle back and forward and that's what controls the temperature and it can keep the temperature controlled very very accurately um, and so basically so you don't get scalded these are in all the better shower valves they should be installed everywhere these days it's just there's no reason for not having a proper thermostatically controlled shower uh, and so that's kind of the, the usual thermostat the different type of arrangements but that's what goes into the shower there are other thermostats usually with a bimetallic strip um, and this is this sort of thing, and I don't know if you know what a bimetallic strip is, but a bimetallic strip is two pieces of metal that are that are sort of welded together, and as the uh, as you heat them, the metal bends, and it can, it, you know in one direction or another, it depends which which metals there are. But this is a bimetallic strip here, and when the temperature hits this, what happens is it moves this the shuttle here between the hot and cold ports, so it moves back and forward between the ports as the temperature hits the bimetallic strip. Um, another, just another way of doing it, this is, a, this is a, an actual easy one, as you can see it's an old one, but the bimetallic strip's coiled in this case, and what that does is it moves it out and in, in this particular case, and the ports are in here, and so therefore it can keep the temperature fairly accurately balanced as well. Just really the two, the two normally different methods that there's that they're used to control the temperature in the shower. Um, now, I don't see there's nobody there's nobody asked any questions, but what I'll maybe do is go to one that was asked earlier. If you can just give me a minute to um, yeah, Brian Walters. Now he's said that um, he's noticed that the the input, the cable and the um, the cable and the pipe that go that goes into the the shower, there's often a hole where, where the cable cable and that comes through and he's worried about the water going from down the back of the shower and into the hole. Well yes it makes sense to seal that if you can. However it's not terribly important because the shower itself, in fact just give me a minute, I think I've got yeah. I've got the shower here, this is the back of the shower here and this fits against the wall, just just pressed against the wall. It's not sealed in any way but it would take quite a lot of water to get down there and get through the hole. It, it makes sense, certainly, um, to 
to have that to have this against the wall and seal the pipework as they come through. One thing not to do is to seal this onto the wall. I'll come to that in a minute or two because I checked a question earlier that somebody's basically asked that. So where the piping cable comes through, perfectly good idea to seal it. But there's no really no real need to worry about sealing this back to the wall. And in fact, it can invalidate the guarantee, but I'll come to that. So if you're worried about that, seal the hole, but don't seal the unit to the wall. The, um, yes, I noticed there was another one from another uh, comment. Just give me a moment. Uh, uh, from Sarwat. And she says that I'm very handsome. And frankly, I've got to agree with that. There really can be no argument about that. Mm. The other one that I noticed was just for somebody called Happy Boy. Just give me a moment. Uh, yeah, Happy Boy's concerned that there's water and electricity together inside the shower. Um, well, there is, but basically it's all fairly safe because the water and electrical components are generally kept apart. The, the only thing that I would advise is if you find a leak coming from the inside of the shower, that's the point to stop using it. With modern, modern trip switches uh, with uh, circuit breakers, um, it's not really a particular worry because if there's anything goes wrong, they'll, uh, they'll trip. Nevertheless, if you see water coming from the shower anywhere, from anywhere other than it ought to be coming, then t don't use it until you find out where the water's coming from. But in general, the inside of the shower is fairly safe. And just, just to go back to this again, the, the, uh, I can remove the case here. The, there's the inside, and the case, there's different methods of fitting the case, but the case generally fits fairly snugly over. And in this case, in this case, in this case it kind of clips onto the top, so there's, there's no chance of water getting in there. Some of them have a neoprene seal along here, I don't know if this one does. No. Um, but some of them have a neoprene seal just to stop any water getting in. But the thing is, basically, a bit of a pun here, but it is shower proof. So you can point the shower at this fairly safely and it won't cause any problems. Some people seal this to the wall. That's what I mentioned earlier. That the, uh, the reason for not sealing this to the wall is that this generates heat inside. And having some free air moving around about it is, is what the manufacturers require. So uh, you'll... I can't think of any manufacturer that's, that says to seal the shower to the wall. And in fact, in some of the pumped showers, if you seal it to the wall, then the, uh, the guarantee will become invalid because there's just no ventilation. Um, and maybe, maybe, maybe if we, when we do our next live feed, I'll, uh, I'll talk a little bit about that, about some of the pumps and the way they can overheat um, inside, the, inside the shower. But... It's, it's perfectly safe, even though there's water and electricity together, unless you see water coming out the bottom of the case, because it could be dripping or spraying anywhere onto the, onto this, the, uh, the live mains, and, well, it basically isn't safe then. Just a moment to put this away. Uh, uh, just give me a minute to have a look, see if we can find any more uh, questions here. One from uh, hmm, uh, Ice on a Boy, and he's fitted a new shower and he's concerned that it's not um, it's not heating properly. Well, he may of course have a faulty shower, but it's pretty unlikely because most of them are tested, either batch tested or individually tested before they leave the factory. So if you do buy a shower and there's water coming out of it. Um, when you're fitting it, it's because it's been tested, not because it's been used before. But an electric shower, that um, it's not a particularly powerful thing. And some people expect if they're moved from, say, a shower that's got a pump or a, a good quality uh, gravity shower with pressure, that they think an electric shower is going to be the same. Well, it's not, because what it's doing is heating the water instantly. As, if, as the water travels through the shower, it gets heated. Um, and that takes a huge amount of power and the kind of standard thing now is an 8.5 kilowatt shower and I think, just give me a minute uh, yeah that's what that, that's what Ace Boy's got in 8.5 and the, the thing is is that if the, um, the shower's not heating, you feel it's not heating properly if, it would only really be one of the elements have gone or a micro switch is not allowing the power through to the elements 
if that's the case, it's not a case of you know, not much power, the shower would be barely warm, it would just, just look warm and no more. So I suspect the Ice Boy's problem is that the shower has just, it's just not as hot as he was hoping it would be. Um, there is a, we, we do have a chart that uh, we can work out what the temperature of the, of the water going into the shower is, um, how much temperature has risen, you know, how much you heat the water and how many litres per minute that uh, you can get out of the shower if that's the case. That, um, if, if you want to email us, we could probably find, I'll probably dig that out and I could actually you know, email you back if you, if you think you have a problem that's uh, with the shower not heating properly. And this, this is fairly definitive and it, it works across all the showers in terms of the amount of heat. A minute. Um, all right, yes, I see, that, I see that Lucas has put the, uh, the, the YouTube video up on how to test the uh, how to test the test the shower the shower thermostat? So um, you'll be able to do that now. The, just just to kind of go back to that, the one other thing to look at because there's there's no real way of telling other than doing the test the, the hot and cold water cups is sometimes you'll see that the wax has come out round about just round about the bottom area here. That's that's no guarantee, but you'll often see it kind of gunged up in there, and that's that's for sure. You need a new thermostat. The rest of the time, it's not really possible to check. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Uh, all right. Yeah, that's a. Uh, here we've got Kaz, Kaz McClatsy, who a few weeks ago now has asked us about changing, you know, that she's having a mega flow or a high pressure system put in. Uh, will her shower work? The old gravity showers are not intended to work on high pressure, the combi boilers, mega flow, pressurised hot water systems. But often they do, and so for the cost of a service kit, it may very well be worthwhile just trying to put a service kit in to save you changing the valve. If the water pressure is not too high, and or if the water pressure on the hot and cold are fairly similar, then a, an, an old style gravity valve can work away quite well without too many problems. Um, but if you do change over to a combi boiler, often what you get is quite a big difference um, in the, the variation in the pressure between the hot and the cold, and an old style gravity valve can cope with that. My advice would be, in general terms, buy a seal kit, try it, because the seal kits are relatively cheap, try it, and if it doesn't work, then I'm afraid you're looking at a new shower. But if the seal kit goes in, then if the pressure's okay, you've cracked it. You've probably, you know, you've saved yourself probably a couple of hundred pounds in terms of buying a new shower that's specifically designed for a combi boiler. Mm -hmm. she, she, said, she said she's already buying one. Yeah. So if you want some advice on, uh, on uh, basically a new one. She's buying a new one? Yeah. Yeah. So long as she buys one for a combi, well, it's a mega flow, it's a high pressure system. So as so long as she buys one for a, um, for a high pressure, for a high pressure system, it's fine. That um, most of the manufacturers on the, the sort of details that will tell you whether it's for high pressure, low pressure, or, or it does it's universal, it does everything. Um, so, and the the range is so varied, it's really difficult to recommend any individual one. Did I try another? One? Sorry, I'm just running through some of these. Perhaps you have prepared some. Leave your questions alone, please. And there's no questions. Um, there's no questions coming in here at the moment. So, uh, Yeah, here's um, someone that's got a Triton T80Z that stopped working properly. Uh, he's not getting enough hot water through on the old setting, also the power is low. And if he moves the knob to fully hot, then he gets really hot water but with terribly low pressure. What can I do? 
Well, I think in this case that he's, you've probably got an element that's burnt out. And what's happening is when you're turning it up to, the, up to as hot as it will go, that what you're really doing is reducing the flow of water through it. So the water's travelling through the shower very slowly, which means that you're not getting a very powerful shower and it's not getting very hot. So it sounds to me as if that's a fault, you know, that's a faulty element. Um, and you can you can check it. We have a uh, we have a, a, a short video showing you how to check and test the elements. So it's likely to be a faulty element, or it could be a faulty micro switch not letting the power through to the element. But kind of one of kind of one of that. That's certainly the first place to start in terms of looking for uh, to solve that problem. Somebody here saying that their shower, the, the lever to turn their shower on and off. This is a bar mixer, but this has got the you know the proverbial on off the on off um, valve. And I find it very stiff. Really, two things that normally cause the lever to go stiff is lack of lubrication. It needs greased inside. Or the other thing that can happen is that if the um, the the O rings or the brass starts to wear inside it. You know, this should have been greased before that. That what happens is that the, um, the, the brass parts don't mesh properly into the hole, and so they're going in at a very slight angle. And what you're having to do is to force it in with the with the handle, and there's no grease there. What that does, of course, is it wears out the brass parts and wears out the shower. So, if at any time you start to feel the handle turn, I mean, you see there's a lovely movement in that. If you feel the levers or handles starting to tighten up. This is the time to get the shower serviced. Showers don't really, in general, need serviced an awful lot. But if you feel something starting to go wrong, do it immediately because it can end up costing a lot more money if you don't attend to it. Because the brass starts to wear, and then rather than maybe putting a couple of seals in, you end up having to replace the, ca the complete cartridge. Or indeed, if it's a, per a particularly old shower and the cartridges are obsolete, you end up having to replace the complete shower for the sake of a a small tube of um, um, grease, silicon grease that you, these things are normally greased with. Um, go again. Um, see, there we go. Uh, here's somebody that's, that's, that's asked a question that what's happen, what happens if you fit the valve upside down? I suppose it happens by mistake. Well, in general terms, if you have uh, this this valve fits um, fits this way, if it's fitted that way, um, that it won't work properly. You may be lucky and it will work, but what tends to happen is that with a thermostatic valve, when you change the temperature, that the temperature will change quite nicely, and then all of a sudden it will snap from fully hot, to, you know, from from hot from the temperature at you 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 want it at. It will snap from there to cold, and or it can be the other way around. It depends on which way, which way the shower is constructed inside. But one of the th things that will happen is that it will snap. That you just just a tiny. You move the valve just a crack, and all of a sudden it will go fully cold, or the reverse. All of a sudden it will go fully hot by just moving it the smallest possible amount. So, um, so most valves will not work properly if they're fitted if the reverse pipe you're hot to the wrong. It's always hot to the left, cold to the right. If they happen to be the wrong way round, um, then that's you know that's the what's that's what will happen. Or if you happen to have a valve that's doing that, it's pretty. I'm pretty certain you'll find it's been piped incorrectly that they put the valve in the wrong way round. Uh, uh, please scroll to the very top of the Okay, I'll read this because, because well, because I'm not, I'm not entirely happy with this, but I'll certainly read this one. So, it says, thank you very much for the generous provision of information. I just short thought I would share some back. One, we have a low pressure gravity shower. 
which performed miserably until we discovered the Myra Beat headset, just about the cheapest at £20. This gives a very impressive jet spray at low pressure and in a hard water, a hard water area. It has about a four inch head. It is easily cleaned by rubbing the heel of your hand across the wee rubber jets and again it dislodges any scale easily. Most of the sort of better quality handsets now have that ability to rub your hand across the, the jets and clear any lime seal from the jets. Two, our ancient Myra 88 won't shut off properly. So we installed um, so yeah, so they installed a three pound plastic bolifix valve between the uh, the shower valve and, and the hose and the handset so they can shut it off with that with a three pound bolifix valve. Um, and it says that the handset and hose works, works fine. Um, it's easy to open and shut using the Bolifix type valve. And it's, it, he doesn't, once he's got the, the setting set on his valve, he doesn't really need to bother about it again other than turning one off the Bolifix valve. Um, to be honest, I can't absolutely recommend that unless, I, unless you see the system first. Because what can happen um, is if there's a slight imbalance in pressure, when you, if you shut this off, the valve off on the outlet, what can happen is that the hot water can go into the cold water side or vice versa, so you can get cross flow across the valve. Um, if the water's balanced, the pressures are balanced, then, then I can see how, um, how I Morrison will get away with it, but I'm not entirely convinced that that's the right way to go. Valves, that, uh, there are some manufacturers that do actually have the valve in the outlet of the shower, but what they always have in the inlet, if that's the case, is check valves so that the water can't travel across the valve, so the hot can't travel into the cold and the cold tank can't travel into the hot. And um, I think this chap's got, yeah, he's got a Myra 80, and Myra 80s do not have check valves. But I think it's a good short term solution, if I'm honest, but it would be better solving the problem properly. Um, and it may be that, that it's a Myra 80, it may be just that he needs a new valve. Um, let me see now. Sorry, David, David Harrison. Which one, uh, Lucas? Just scroll, scroll down a bit. Uh, a green, green day. Uh, yeah, well, uh, okay. David Harrison's about to buy a digital shower. How do you rate them? Hmm. Um, I can't decide which make, Myra or Aqualiza. Uh, there is a third runner tube. I've not looked into that tight yet. What's your view? Hmm. I don't know. I'm a bit. I think they're good showers, they work very well, sort of digital showers, they control the temperature fairly accurately, they look good. The problem is, is that the, the components that go inside the, the processing box, um, so there's, the hot and cold water goes in, there's um, a, a thermostat, not always like this, there's sometimes an electronic thermostat in it, it measures the temperature of the water that goes into the box and the temperature that goes out and that it keeps the, uh, there's valves inside that it keeps in balance all the time. So, to be honest, I think they're probably a bit over, they look good and all this, but they're over complicated um, and quite expensive to repair. In fact, um, Aqualiza ones, that they, they're very good, you get a five year guarantee with them, but um, the, the guarantee's okay, but when you get to year six and you've got to spend, I think, four or five hundred pounds on a new processor, Whereas an ordinary shower, you'd be looking at maybe a new valve or, or seals or, or you know or something fairly simple. The problem is, is that to repair them, they're fairly expensive. They look good, they work well, but when they do get old and break down, they're expensive to repair. So, uh, well, would I have one? I guess I would, because I would know how to fix it. But at the same time, uh, I'm not I'm not a big fan until they can bring the cost down a bit so that. Because you don't want to have to replace a shower after it's seven or eight years old or have to spend that amount of money on it um, fixing it after it's seven or eight years old. Whereas showers, I guess, and I'm, I'm pulling a number out of the air here, but showers go wrong about once every ten years or, or they start to go wrong about ten years old and they can usually easily be fixed and you're getting at least another five years out of them before another component will go wrong. But if you're having to wait, maybe it goes wrong at seven or eight years and you're having to put a new a completely new processing box in, it can be an expensive business. So once you get the price down, I'd be happier to recommend them then, but I'm not a big enthusiast enthusiast of them. Uh, anything else, Lucas, that's uh, uh, £3 down, Stuart? Uh, Stuart. 
Oh, we actually have a question on live chat. All right, yeah, so we'll do the live chat with somebody here. Fantastic video. Can you please advise me if possible? This is, sorry, Richie Ross Foster. Can you please advise me if possible, if it is possible to get the same pressure from an electronic shower as you can from a normal pressure shower? Do you have any advice on brand or method? Um, well, it depends how low that pressure is, uh, Richard, uh, Richie. Um, really, just as I was just trying to explain earlier, electric showers are not as, are in general not as powerful. That um, most manufacturers recommend a distance for a norm, for I, I think what you're considering a normal a normal shower, the distance between the top of the shower head and the bottom of the cold water tank, as that should be a minimum of one meter. Um, and I can't see how many litres per minute you expect from that, you should expect from that. Um, sorry, Richie. That's we all got a bit of a technical hitch with the camera there. So I'll run. I'll run back over that just in case anybody else wants to to hear it. He's asking me if there's any advice if you can get. First of all, if you can get the same pressure from a normal shower as an electronic shower. So I'm assuming he means a gravity shower or a pump shower and a, um, and a, an electric shower. Um, as I was just as I was trying to explain that I. Gravity shower normally requires um, about one meter between the top of the shower head and the bottom of the cold water tank. That's what most manufacturers recommend as the minimum that their showers will work on. And so that's that would be 0.1 of a bar, one meter between the two. 0.2 of a bar would be two meters, 0.3, so on and so on, um, all the way up. And so the more height you have between the bottom of the cold water tank and the top of the shower head, the more pressure you get. And so I would reckon that probably this is this, I'm kind of guessing just from past experience here that if you've got a kind of one meter head, that depending on the valve, it's going to be equivalent to like an eight or nine kilowatt, an eight or nine kilowatt shower, um, in terms of the, you know going to an electric one. The most powerful electric one you can get is ten point eight, and where they really come into play, really work well, is in the in the winter time when the mains waters come into the shower really cold so the shower's got a lot of hard work to do to heat the water up so it, it, it's kind of like trying to compare apples and pears uh, to that comparison so um, but the advice I would give is go for the, if, it's, if you go for an electric shower go for the most powerful one you can so it's a that would be a 10.8 kilowatt shower or a 10.5 there's not much difference that does mean using using heavier cable um, and it's got to be uh, wired all the way back to the meter with heavy cable, but then that will definitely give you the best electric shower you can you can get. And in terms of the gravity showers, it really depends on the shower heads and the flow rate. And sometimes it's, if you have a huge big shower head, the problem is that the, there's no pressure from it. There's no um, there's no sort of real there's no real jets. The water just falls out of the head. So um, the, uh, once again, it, the, the, the it's, it's sort of horses for courses and in many cases people like you know the huge heads the big rainwater heads if you've got a lot of pressure but they don't want the pressure but they want just a lot of water gently falling on them whereas other people you know like jets the sort of thing that'll pin you to the wall so um not easy to the, the question is not easy to answer but i guess that's the best answer i've got at the moment i think probably can we, can we do one more yeah we can do one more sure uh, uh, the list. Oh, the 722, yes, just give me a sec to mm -hmm. uh, just service my 722 with help from the video. The shower uh, was leaking from the shower head and now not a drip, uh, uh, now not a drip in sight. Tools used, large adjustable flat headed screwdriver, large adjustable, 
large flat headed screwdriver and a small flat headed screwdriver. Parts are tight at times, but be patient and ease them with the screwdriver, and eventually they will un they will undo. Once the once disassembled, like in the video, my service pack had a step-by-step -step guide on the sequence to replace the seals and washers to reassemble. Yeah, um, this is in fact a 723 cartridge. Um, and Stuart's right, it, it's, it, it looks complicated and we do have a video that shows you how to, um, that shows you how to fit it. The only thing to watch, um, I wonder if I can just do this, just give me a moment, um, no. The only thing to watch, this is one that somebody sent back damaged. There's a pin here that locates the, um, locates the, the, the cartridge in the body. So it pushes in and there's a, a pin here that locates that. The problem is, is that this bit here has to line up. There's a slot here that has to line up with this slot here. And this is why this come back, came back. This person sent this cartridge back saying it didn't work. And it's jammed, well, it's jammed, and the reason it's jammed is because they've actually fitted it with this without the two slots lining up, and the whole thing's just stuck. So it's a perfectly good cartridge. But just watch that. That's exp it's explained in the video how to do that, and how to tighten and slacken the nuts by placing this back in, and it all makes it a bit simpler. But if you do end up doing a 723, be very careful to get these two parts lined up, because that will ruin the cartridge. Um, if it's tightened up and you, when you actually screw the, the body back on you should notice that the body is not going on squarely it's not a snug fit and what's happened is that the uh, when that's been pushed back in it's pushed this back it's folded back the pressure of screwing the cap on has pushed this back and basically damaged the valve and so um, so be careful be careful with that I guess that's it um, um, I hope you're happy with the answers that we received and some of the bit technical talk that we've had on the various bits for sure about the um, about the wax capsules, the wax capsule type thermostat and the bimetallic strip type thermostat. I think next time what we'll do is oops, we'll have a chat about pumps. I brought a couple up here. So this is the kind of different pumps. This is a pump for um, that you would use to uh, to increase the pressure to your shower. Um, this. Another one, same again, just different manufacturer, they go about it a slightly different way. But once again, just a, a pump that will uh, increase the pressure to your shower. And there's this kind of thing, which is a pump that's inside the shower. Um, you can find, you can put these in, you have these in um, electric showers and, and just small pressure showers. I'll explain a bit about the pumps, what they do, and um, the just basically the, the different types of pumped pressure shower you can get. So looking at our next live feed um, and thank you for watching this. I hope you found it interesting. You'll be able to pick up any more of our stuff on YouTube. There's lots of uh, help videos there um, and if not you can email us or just uh, leave a comment in YouTube and we'll try and answer them there. Um, I'd like to say thank you to Lucas who sits behind the camera and kind of keeps me right. Um, and, and so until the next time uh, Goodbye.